What were you doing when you were 18 years old? Don't answer that. Oliver Behrman, 18 years old, already Formula 4 champion, Formula 3 race winner, Formula 2 race winner. His girlfriend is fit as fuck. And if all of this wasn't enough achievements for an 18 year old, then at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, where he was racing for Prima in Formula 2, he slaps it on pole position. That was on Thursday. So he woke up Friday morning thinking he was going to start the F2 race from pole position. But then, Carlos Sainz is rushed into hospital with something called appendicitis. I've fallen and I can't get up. Which is very serious. Alex Albon was dropped out of the Italian Grand Prix two years ago with appendicitis and he almost died to death. He suffered from respiratory failure and was left on a ventilator following complications. That does sound pretty bad, but thankfully the only complications Carlos Sainz suffered was having to walk around for a few days looking like he'd shit himself. Or that he'd spent the night in Max Mosley's sex dungeon, getting his arse done in by a woman dressed up as a Nazi. Yes, I know I've mentioned that multiple times in multiple videos, but I just think it's incredible. He was sheltering enemies of the state in his trousers. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Yes, absolutely. So, with Carlos in hospital, Ferrari drafted in Oliver Behrman to replace him, which people called a baptism of fire. <laughs> Because it was so late in the weekend that Behrman was only going to get the one hour long FP3 session before he had to qualify for the Grand Prix. And that one hour of practice was cut 15 minutes short when Guan Yu Zhou fucked it into the barriers, bringing out the red flag. Thanks a lot, China. Don't trust China. China is asshole. So this kid, with 45 minutes of practice, was about to head out for qualifying on one of the most dangerous tracks on the Formula One calendar. Fun! So he rolls out of the pit lane for qualifying and immediately goes full send. He brushes up against the wall coming out of the final corner and sets a time fast enough for ninth place and makes it through to Q2. Then in Q2, he locks a wheel going into turn four on his first run and abandons the lap. Nothing serious. And on his final run, he brushes the wall on the outside of turn 22, bounces across the curb, and even with that mistake, he goes 11th fastest and only 0.03 seconds behind Lewis Midfield Milton. You know the guy that Ferrari just paid almost half a billion dollars to replace Carlos Sainz. We know Ferrari is terrible at making strategic decisions. Exhibit A, Exhibit B, Exhibit C, Exhibit D, Exhibit... Uh, right, there are so many exhibits. But firing one of your drivers, who also happens to be the only non-Red Bull driver to win a race over the past 18 months, yeah, you're going to fire that guy and replace him with a guy who is currently getting outperformed by an international terrorist in the same car and who can barely drive faster than an 18-year-old with 45 minutes of experience. I immediately regret this decision. So Oliver Behrman made it through qualifying without shagging it into the barriers and lines up 11th on the grid. But now he's got a 50 lap race to get through on a circuit where the chance of terrorism is 100% and he's starting right in the middle of the field. Fun! So the lights go out and everybody scrambles into the first corner. Behrman manages to stay out of trouble, goes a little bit wide at turn four, nothing serious. He had a little sniff at Sushi Tanoda going through turn 13 but makes it through the first lap unscathed. But then! On lap 7, the window licker, as per, clips the wall on the inside of 22 and fucks it directly into the barriers. Okay, can you bring it back, Lance? No, I'm in the f***ing wall. I copy that. No, I can't bring the car back. I'm in the wall. Yeah, and whose fault is that, you fucking spastic? An 18-year-old with 45 minutes of practice managed not to fuck it into the barriers, and this twat couldn't make it seven laps. And look at him, sat behind the barriers. What, what do you think is going through his mind at this moment? Is he thinking about how he keeps proving all of his haters right? Or how he's holding the entire team back with his incompetence? No. What is going on in Lance Stroll's mind is a constant loop of of a monkey playing cymbals with circus music in the background. So, with the window licker in the barriers, Behrman moved up to 10th place. Now he's in the points. 
And when the race restarted, he was right up Sushi's twat as they barrel down the main straight. He switches to the inside, goes for the lunge, and takes the position off Sushi Tadoda. Then, three laps later, he drives past China on the main straight, taking another position. China is asshole! He does the same thing to Nico Hulkenberg and then settles in for the long haul. He manages to get through the race without doing anything stupid, putting in consistent lap times, and when he crosses the line, he finished seventh place. And ahead of the guy that Ferrari paid half a billion dollars to replace their only race winner for the past 18 months. Oh my God! Oh no! So Oliver Behrman made a sensational Formula One debut and gave us all something to talk about in what would have been another maxi pad lame fest. Because after the first two races of the season, things weren't looking too good. Nobody was paying attention to what happened on track in Bahrain because at the time, pictures of Christian Horner's cock were all over the internet. And if it wasn't for Carlos Sainz's appendicitis, then there probably wouldn't have been anything to talk about in Saudi Arabia either. Even Max Verstappen himself can't be asked with Formula Formula One anymore. The night before the race in Saudi Arabia, he was on stream playing iRacing at like two o'clock in the morning. Could we very quickly see a uh, controller cam, Max? That they just won't stop asking. Yes. Lovely job. Perfect. It's great news. Thank you, Max. You should be a hand model. Right. Good luck. Many hours later. We're going to die here because we touched the curb. No, oh, there's a guy here! <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> come on, man. Who is? Oh. 3.28 a.m. All right, boys, I'm also going to go to bed. Good luck tomorrow. 4 a.m. for you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right, I'll speak to you guys tomorrow. <laughs> See you, mate. Good luck. Yeah. Sleep well. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. <laughs> Max, Formula One is not a side quest. It's the main campaign. So when Formula One arrived in Australia for the third race of the season, nobody was looking forward to getting out of bed at four o'clock in the morning just to watch Maxi Pad cruise to a 10th win in a row. But then! Max Verstappen's arsehole exploded, taking him out of the race on lap four. Pouis Pamilton had an engine problem and retired, causing Team LH to have a meltdown. Osama bin Russell hammered it into the barriers on the final lap and Ferrari got a one, two, finish! Lord have mercy, I'm about to burst. I am calm. So the most controversial moment of the weekend was the Osama incident. More specifically, the 20-second time penalty the FIA gave to Fernando Alonso. Because initially, it just looked like Osama did what Osama does best, which is twat it into the barriers. But then the onboard telemetry from Fernando's car was revealed, which showed him breaking 100 meters early for the corner, downshifting, speeding up again before breaking a second time for the corner, which some people might might call a brake check. Other people might call it very aggressive race craft. In fact, that is what Fernando called it in a statement he released after the race. He referenced the battle he had at last year's Brazilian Grand Prix, where he spent 37 laps defending from Sergio Perez by deliberately slowing down more than he normally would going through the final corner, making it impossible for Perez to launch an attack. Race craft. He also mentioned Imola 2005, where he did a similar thing defending from Michael Schumacher. He said, changing racing lines, sacrificing entry speed to have good exits from corners is part of the art of motorsport. Yes, Fernando is an artist, like Van Gogh, or Leonardo da Vinci, or the guy from Art Attack. Pretty sure it turned out he was a nonce. He was definitely a nonce. It's the middle of the night. And there you are, lying in bed, playing with yourself. And just slop it onto your nice, soft, smooth dick. So that it doesn't dry out. Look at that. That really is quite rock hard. And now, you're ready to come. Try it yourself. Nuts. The point is, the FIA gave Fernando da Vinci a 20-second penalty because Osama bin Russell got scared by his racecraft and fucked it into the barriers. Or is there something else going on here? Because this video was going around social media after the race, and it's a video of Fernando Alonso and Johnny Herbert. I'm going to have to give you some context because this rabbit hole goes pretty deep. At the 2016 Australian Grand Prix, Fernando Alonso had a mother and father 
uh, of an accident, flying through the air upside down before crawling out of the mangled wreckage that used to be his McLaren. That was one of the biggest crashes of his entire career. At the next race in Bahrain, the FIA declared Fernando unfit to race on medical grounds. They said he had not recovered sufficiently following his crash in Australia, so they forced him to sit out the race. And then Johnny Perbert made a few comments suggesting that Fernando was going downhill and questioning his motivation to get back in the car. As you can imagine, Fernando didn't take that too well. So on Friday before FP3, Fernando gate crashes the live broadcast to tell Johnny exactly what he thinks of his disrespectful comments. You've got to be able to. There's a man coming to, to see you, Johnny. <laughs> Hey! Are we not no, you're not going to retire. You're That's not good. A true champion. Good to have you. You, are... you ended up as a commentator because you're not a true champion, man. I know. Thank you very much. No! Shit! Why is any of this relevant? Excellent question! Because at the 2024 Australian Grand Prix, where Fernando Alonso was given a 20-second time penalty for pulling a big brain racecraft move, one of the FIA stewards for that weekend was Johnny Perbert. Now, is it ridiculous to suggest that Johnny Perbert held on to this moment for seven and a half years and then gave Fernando Alonso a 20 second penalty because he's still bitter about him making him look like a red twat on live television? No, it's not ridiculous because that's exactly what happened. So it was Carlos Sainz who won the Australian Grand Prix. You know, the guy who got fired for a washed Pooh's Pamilton and had his appendix out like two weeks ago and still doesn't have a drive for next season which is disgusting. Disgusting! And even worse, Puis Pamilton, after three races of the season, is now one point behind the window licker in the World Championship. Half a billion dollars. 